Hi everyone, so today we are going to learn two beautiful concepts which are Cauchy Schwartz and Tito's inequality. And as you'll see later on, Tito's inequality or Tito's lemma, as some people like to call it, is nothing but like a special subcase of this Cauchy Schwartz inequality. And we're going to apply that on probably one of the most elegant inequality problems that I know of, right? So without wasting any time, let's get started. This is the problem number two from the IMO in 1995. And in this video, we're going to be looking at what the Cauchy Schwartz inequality is. Obviously, looking at T2's inequality is a special case of this Cauchy Schwartz. Then we have the AMJM HM inequality, which is such a standard inequality that it is many times used in conjugation with a lot of these other inequalities, right? And after that, we have some book sessions for senior math Olympiads and of course, a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so uh, it's given that let ABC be positive real numbers such that ABC is equal to 1. So whenever we have positive, a few things just click to my mind that you can use AM, GM, HM, you know, without worrying about anything. And then we need to prove this given inequality. Okay, so I think without, uh, before, before get, getting into this, uh, what we should probably do is discuss a little bit, right? So first let's discuss the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. And then we'll form a connection between this and T2's lemma or T2's inequality. So Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, if you've heard of this before, this looks something like this. It just states that a1 square plus a2 square all the way up to an square, okay, into b1 square plus b2 square all the way up to bn square. This entire thing, the product is greater than or equal to a1 b1 plus a2 b2 all the way up to an bn whole squared, right? And when does the equality occur? So let's just discuss the equality case as well. So equality occurs um, when a1 over b1 is equal to a2 over b2 is equal to a3 over b3. So all of these are equal to one another, right? a n over b n. When all of these like ratios are equal to one another, the equality occurs, not the inequality. In general, we have the inequality, but this is the equality case. Okay. Now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a substitution. I'm going to substitute a i with x i divided by square root of y i. And I'm going to substitute all b i's with the root of y i. So what happens if I substitute this into the Cauchy Schwartz inequality into this over here, what will I get? I will get something very fascinating, you know. I'll get x1 squared divided by y1 plus x2 squared divided by y2. And this obviously goes all the way up to xn squared divided by yn. Multiplied by obviously y1 plus y2 plus all the way up to yn. This will be greater than or equal to x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to xn and we square it. Right? So this is what we have obtained. Or in other words, I can basically write x1 squared divided by y1 plus x2 squared divided by y2 all the way up to xn squared divided by yn. This entire quantity is greater than or equal to x1 plus x2 all the way up to xn whole squared divided by y1 plus y2 plus all the way up to yn. And this is a special name. This is called as T2's lemma or T2's inequality, right? This is what we call as T2's inequality. So as we are really seeing over here, it's just nothing but a special case of this Cauchy Schwartz. We just applied this, uh, this substitution to Cauchy Schwartz and we obtained this inequality which is called T2's inequality which is very, very, very helpful in a lot of problems, right? And let's just discuss the equality case as well. Now, because this is just a special case of Cauchy Schwartz, the equality case is basically the same x1 over y1 is equal to x2 over y2. All of these ratios are equal to one another. Right? Awesome. So you should keep this in mind, Tito's inequality and the general Cauchy Schwartz inequality. But okay, I think let's get back to our problem. So in our problem, we need to prove a given inequality, right? We need to prove that one by a cube times b plus c plus one by b cube times c plus a plus 1 by c cubed times a plus b is greater than or equal to 3 by 2 with the condition 
we have a special condition that ABC is equal to 1. Now, you know, a general thing about Cauchy Schwartz is whenever we have squares, it's good to apply Cauchy Schwartz, right? Let me just demonstrate that to you. So, if you actually notice this Cauchy Schwartz inequality, we have squares, you know, sum of squares over here, over here, and this entire squared quantity over here. So, in general, whenever you have squares, you should somewhere in the back of your mind know that probably Cauchy Schwartz is going to be used or T2's inequality. But in this question, we have cubes, and therefore, it is not as natural to apply. Um, Cauchy Schwartz or T2. So it's in a way a little bit hidden. But what you can do is, in a way, you can transform this into a, something of the form of a quadratic, right? So basically, basically, ABC is equal to 1. So ABC whole square will also be equal to 1. So can I just multiply each term by ABC whole square? I can, right? Technically, I can. Because I'm just multiplying by 1. It's not going to change anything, right? So if I just do that, abc whole square divided by c cube a plus b i need to prove that this is greater than or equal to 3 by 2 right essentially i'm just multiplying by 1 on all on all sides on all terms and when i do this i'll actually notice something fascinating so what really happens over here is the the cubes get cancelled out in a way so we are left with b square c square divided by a b plus c right plus i will be left with a square c square divided by b a plus c plus i'll be left with a square b squared divided by c times a plus b and i need to prove that this thing is greater than or equal to 3 by 2. this is fascinating because now we are dealing with squares and now we're going to use t2's lemma right now we're going to use t2's lemma this thing so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to plug in x1 is bc x2 is ac and x3 is ab so we have these squares, right? Y1 is obviously going to be the denominators. So that will be A times B plus C. Y2 will be B times A plus C. And Y3 will be C times A plus B. So if you've obtained this inequality after that, it's direct, direct application of T2's lemma, right? Nothing much to think about over here. And when I apply T2's lemma to this, I will obtain that. Square this up. B square C square divided by A times B plus C plus um, a square c square divided by b times a plus c plus uh, a square b square divided by c times a plus b. This will be greater than or equal to bc plus ac plus ab whole squared divided by a times b plus c plus b times a plus c plus c times a plus b. Basically summation of the y quantities. And on the numerator we have summation of the x quantities whole squared. Right? Now the left hand side. So... Maybe let's just use a notation. So what notation can we use? Let's say the left hand side, this quantity, let me call that as K, right? And we need to prove that K is greater than or equal to three by two, right? So to prove is K greater than or equal to three by two. Basically, I'm assuming the left hand side to be equal to K. Now, when I do that, I'll have K is greater than or equal to AB plus BC plus AC whole square divided by AB plus AC plus BC into two. Basically, I'm just simplifying this, what we have over here, nothing else. And I've just assumed the left-hand side of that to be equal to K, basically. So, K is essentially greater than or equal to AB plus BC plus AC divided by 2. Now, if I can prove, if I can prove that this AB plus BC plus AC is greater than or equal to 3 by 2, that would imply that K is greater than or equal to 3 by 2. Isn't that correct? That is correct. So basically, for that to happen, I need to prove AB plus BC plus AC by 2 is greater than or equal to 3 by 2. So which implies it suffices to prove that AB plus BC plus AC is greater than or equal to 3. Because I can just cancel these twos, right? So if I prove, if I prove that AB plus BC plus AC is greater than or equal to 3, if this is true, then that means that this will also be true. And if that is true, then K is greater than or equal to 3 by 2, which is what we had to prove, right? K is essentially the left-hand side of whatever we need to prove. Okay, great. How do we prove this? Well, it's actually very easy because uh, if you remember, ABC was equal to 1. So um, AB just becomes 1 by C. BC just becomes 1 by A. And AC just becomes 1 by B. So I all I need to do is I need to prove 
वन बाय ए प्लस वन बाय बी प्लस वन बाय सी इज ग्रेटर दैन और इक्वल टू थ्री विद द कंडीशन दैट ए बी सी इज इक्वल टू वन हाउ डू वी डू दैट वेल स्टैंडर्ड जी एम एच एम इन इक्वालिटी सो वी हैव क्यूब रूट ऑफ ए बी सी इज ग्रेटर दैन और इक्वल टू थ्री डिवाइड बाई वन बाय ए प्लस वन बाय बी प्लस वन बाय सी विच इम्प्लाइज वन बाय ए प्लस वन बाय बी प्लस वन बाय सी इज ग्रेटर दैन इक्वल टू थ्री एज ए बी सी इज वन विच इम्प्लाइज द क्यूब रूट ऑफ ए बी सी will also obviously be one right so what does this mean it means that 1 by a plus 1 by b plus 1 by c is greater than or equal to 3 which implies ab plus bc plus ac is greater than or equal to 3 which implies ab plus bc plus ac by 2 is greater than or equal to 3 by 2 and that implies that k is essentially greater than or equal to 3 by 2 and our problem is solved and that is what we had to prove so very fascinating you know pretty good application of this uh, t2's lemma and amg major mean inequality obviously you know any inequality problem without that isn't uh, isn't a complete inequality problem i think you can just put it that way so hope you enjoyed that i think it was a classic example a very elegant inequality one of my most favorite uh, questions in inequalities out there so really hope you enjoyed it and learned a little bit out of it okay so you have some book sessions for senior math olympiads i am a compendium paul nobles by barbeu Elementary number three by Sia Pinsky, graph theory by Harari, combinatorics by Brewerdy, secrets and inequalities, and of course, functional equations and how to solve them by Christopher G. Small. Okay, so at the end we have similar but challenging problem, and this is you know originally a puzzle problem. So if you remember, maybe when you were small, you might have solved certain puzzles, and this is something similar to that. But now that we have learned certain formal techniques in mathematics, we can solve this a little bit more formally. You know, so try and use T2's inequality for this. The hint is that there are squared quantities: one square, two square, three square, four square, five square, six square. Whenever you see squared quantities, you should keep in the back of your mind that probably Cauchy-Schwarz or T2's inequality is going to be used somewhere or the other, right? This is a classic puzzle problem. Uh, maybe try it out, and if you're able to do it, let me know. Uh, until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much, and bye bye. The programs are designed. for students who are passionate about mathematics and they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training individual evaluation and remedial sessions the reason chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real olympians from leading universities in india united states and europe Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.